With us now is Lucas Hoag. Lucas, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. We got to visit a little bit uh, before the cameras started rolling about our love of Nashville. Yeah, it's a great town. I've been here for quite a while and uh, I've seen it change so many times, but uh, it's always seemed like it's changing for the better. So it's great. I love it here. What would you um, say about your music? What genre is it? Because things to me seem like they're kind of blended nowadays. There's not really like one sound. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There is a lot of uh, gray areas with a lot of music right now. Definitely I'm in the country vein for sure. Um, contemporary country, that's that's my bread and butter and heart and soul. Um, but when it came to putting um, some of this holiday music together, uh, started, I reached out to a good friend, Kent Wells, who's produced so many amazing artists like Dolly Parton, just to name one of the amazing artists. Um, <laughs> and uh, this project has turned out amazingly. I can't even say enough great things about it because I've been recording music for a long time and you usually get the first run of mixes and you're sitting behind the console and you're you're really analyzing stuff and you're kind of like, oh, I could do better here, I could fix this. But this is the first time I sat behind a, a project, listened to it for the first time down and was like all smiles the whole time. I'm like, I can't wait to get this out. This is so That's cool. That's so nice. Now, where did you record it? Where did you do your sessions? We recorded the sessions down here at the um, soundstage next to Black River Record. And then I did all the vocals and overdubs down at Dark Horse in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. And for our audience, when they don't know what overdubs are, uh, explain yeah. to us the process because it's fascinating how it all works. Yeah. It is. It really is. Um, we actually filmed all the, the backgrounds and behind the scenes for my TV show as well. So everybody gets to see it in this upcoming episode that airs tonight. Um, but uh, when you go in and record an album, you'll get the fundamentals of the core of the song, right? Um, so you'll have bass, drums, guitar, acoustic, piano, things like that. But then you take those mixes and you go into another studio and you kind of really dissect it. And you're like, oh, um, I, I'd fix this lead part here or this piano lick isn't quite right. And you'd kind of fix all those. And then you do actually the final vocal and background vocals in a different area as well. You know what I found fascinating about the Carpenters and the way that they did their music is that they were also their own background singers. Did you know that story? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's that's something that I've never been great at is harmonies, but uh, I can always pick them out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know when it sounds good and you know when it doesn't, right? Exactly. I know what I'm good at and what I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so 12.25. Correct, yeah. This yeah. album, what are some of the songs on it? What can your audience uh, and your new listeners actually look forward to? Yeah, so a lot of classics that are just I grew up loving. And then I've, I've written a bunch of uh, my own Christmas music as well. It's just something that's near and dear to my heart. I love writing Christmas songs and me and my buddy Corey just go so well together. When we get in a room, we can just pump out Christmas music and it always comes out so much fun. Um, so some of the, the great songs that I've recorded on this one are like Let It Snow um, with Jamie O'Neill. I got to do a duet with her and she's just a fantastic artist, amazing person. And her voice is so incredible. She's matched perfectly on this track. And then um, Come Full Circle. So I grew up listening to a guy by the name of Skip Ewing who has written so many number one hits in the country world um, back in the late 90s. So as a kid, I was listening to him growing up and I fell in love with his Christmas album. And uh, he heard a, a Christmas song of, of his that I recorded a few years back and reached out to me last year and wanted to say how much he loved it. And wow. then I took the, that moment to be like, hey, by the way, I'm recording a Christmas album. Um, any chance <laughs> I can get you to uh, to do a duet with me? And he, he was all for it. So. We've uh, turned out to be really great friends, and I recorded Mrs. Santa Claus, which is one of Skip's songs, and uh, to, for us to do what it is like a dream come true for me. That You know what? I, I grew up listening to that song, too. I love that song. Oh, and it's all, it's all in the ask. You know, it's an invitation. And good for you that you had the courage to just <laughs> speak up, right? It's that yeah. moment where it's, it's something you've always wanted, but you might not have the courage to just say and I'm sure that was a wonderful moment for you where you said, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I actually still have the uh, voice voicemail from Skip when he called me. He was like, hey, I love what you did with uh, it wasn't his child and blah, blah, blah. He's like, call me. I'd love to talk to you. So I literally called him like as soon as I listened to the voicemail and, and just took the opportunity because uh, those opportunities don't come that often. What other um, special magical moments have you had so far? With uh, the Christmas album? Just within just within your career, you know, because it takes a yeah. lot, I think, to have that courage to, like, leave Nebraska and to go to Nashville and say, I'm just going to do this. And 
you know, I'm, I'm taking a one-way ticket or I'm packing everything I have in my car, which might just be a pair of jeans, a pair of boots, a cowboy <laughs> hat, and just, you know. <laughs> so, and that's exactly it, that's exactly how it was. It was uh, not long after I graduated high school that uh, I just decided, you know, Nashville was the place for me. And I packed up everything in my old Dodge truck and I just took off. I didn't know a single person here. And as soon as I got here, I started just knocking on every door and kicking the, the sidewalks all up and down Music Row, just being like, hey, who wants to write? Can we sing? Uh, what writers and I can I do? And uh, I went to a, get a pair of boots. I finally saved up enough to get a new pair of boots because I literally walked the soles off of my boots. Wow. And the guy that sold me the boots said, hey, man, are you here for music? I was like, yes, sir. He's like, yeah, kind of. you kind of have that look about you. I was like, uh-oh, is that good or bad? He's like, well, just so you know, you know, 3,000 people a month move to Nashville to do something in the music industry, and 98% of them fail at the end of that month. And I was like, well, that's not going to be me. I'm not going to let that happen. And I uh, went out and got a really good job because I was a carpenter. So and that's kind of how I built it. And I started meeting so many people and trading my carpenter skills for studio time or writing sessions or things like that. And that's how it started to just compound. And I started meeting the right people. And obviously, we all meet wrong people here and there. But uh, one of my great friends, Eddie Kay, who's uh, the band leader, he was one of the founding members of Ricochet at the time and has now been band leader for Montgomery Gentry and so many great players and now he's my band leader for my Christmas project when we go out on tour. So it's so cool that I've had these friends for so long. And it's just a testament to the fact that, you know, when God puts you in the right places and the right people and you can surround yourself with good people, good things can happen. I have to say amen to that. Um because it's been the same thing for me. It's just good. about it's just about that perseverance and that kindness. It's about borrowing a cup of sugar. And in the country music world, it seems like that. It seems that, and you're right, you're going to run across the people that are a little competitive and maybe they got a Grammy and you wanted the Grammy or whatever. That happens. I get it. But for the most most part, people want to help other people shine. Um, and uh, before we wrap up, one cool thing that I love about Nashville, too, is that sometimes people that have had major success, you'll mm -hmm. see them playing at the little local bar, kind of yeah. mentoring the next generation. And it's such a beautiful blended tapestry of people. So congratulations, Lucas. And uh, I thank you for sharing your own truth, your own truth with us today. That's so cool, you know. And yeah. um, whoever that boot salesman was, you know, thumbs up to him <laughs> for knowing right? that, that you had what it takes. <laughs> exactly. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas and everything in between. Thank you so much. All right. And here we're going to listen to a little bit of your music. And now here's Lucas for your listening pleasure. Thanks, Lucas. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, it doesn't show signs of stopping, and I brought some corn for popping. Yeah, the lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight How I'll hate going out in the storm But if you really hold me tight On the way home I'll be warm Yeah, the fire is slowly dying And my dear, we're still goodbye But as long as you love me so Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow All the way home I'll be warm Oh, that fire is slowly dying Oh, and my dear, we're still goodbye But as long as you love me so